Hey YouTube, so today we're going to continue the home lab series that I started a few months ago. We're going to first talk about what a DMZ is, how it's used in the real world, and then I'm going to give you some best practices to keep in mind while creating your DMZ. And then after we get done with all the informational stuff, we're going to get into PFSense and create one of our own. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So what is a DMZ? A DMZ is a physical or logical subnetwork that exposes services to an untrusted, usually larger network such as the internet. And some examples of the services that you might want to expose to the internet um, are an email server, if you're using an FTP server for like business to business communications, sending files to your partners, file sharing, that kind of thing. And, um, so it's basically anything that you host that can be accessed from the, uh, the World Wide Web. So your DMZ is less secure than your LAN and is more secure than the World Wide Web because you're managing it. Uh, your DMZ, you want to keep your DMZ protected from your LAN and vice versa. Uh, proper isolation is the number one way to keep your LAN protected from your DMZ. Let's say your DMZ server gets compromised and if it's not properly isolated, then your LAN is at risk. But if you're using proper isolation, then the LAN is not at a significant risk. So designing the DMZ, we're going to be using port forwarding, and that will allow that internal service to be accessible from the internet um, or the World Wide Web. And we're going to use NAT reflection just to test our setup, make sure that it's accessible, make sure that everything's running um, and whatnot. And basically that will allow us to hit that external IP address and port internally, which is not something you're normally allowed to do. And continuing in the trend of isolation, we're going to use a non-overlapping subnet. You don't want to reuse something that's being used by your LAN for your DMZ. Again, isolation. And since this is a uh, since the server that we're exposing to the internet is a virtual machine, we're going to create a separate virtual switch, a brand new virtu virtual switch inside of ESXi. We're going to place that virtual switch on a unused port on our NIC, and that will allow us to achieve both physical and logical separation. So moving along, um, some here are some rules uh, for creating ACL or firewall rules and some best practices, just to things to keep in mind. Um, most of the stuff won't apply to what I'm doing here, but you know, I'm not sure what you'll be putting in your DMZ. I just wanna make sure that you have all the knowledge and information to make the best informed decision possible. So um, let me just run through this real quick. So um, basic principles for configuring firewall ACLs, uh, you want to block incoming requests from internal or private loopback and multicast IP address ranges. If you don't, if none of these terms make sense to you, uh, just Google it and you know do your research. Block incoming requests from protocols that should only be used locally, ICMP, DHCP, etc. Configure IPv6 to either block all IPv6 traffic or allow it to um, or allow it to authorize host ports only. I'm not going to be using IPv6, so again, it's not applicable in this setup. Um, so normally you want to drop traffic versus reject. So a deny rule can either drop a packet by sending a TCP reset or explicitly reject it by sending an ICMP port slash protocol unreachable to the requester and dropping traffic makes it harder for an adversary to identify port states accurately. So if you um, drop the traffic, basically the attacker, whoever is trying to probe your network won't get a response back. And if you if you did um, reject versus drop, where you get a packet back or you get a response back, it obviously lets you know that there's something behind that port or there's something there and you know they can keep probing it or not. If you drop it, there's nothing comes back, so it's like, oh, nothing's there. So, so um, an attack that can be used to enumerate your firewall configuration by an attacker is firewalking, and um, it occurs when an attacker can find an open port on the firewall, which in my case will be the port 22, and then they can send a packet with a time to live of one pass the firewall to find the host behind that service or that port. And to mitigate this, all you have to do is block outgoing ICMP status messages, and this will mitigate or prevent that attack from 
being successful. Moving along, egress filtering. Again, this is not applicable because um, the only traffic that I'm going to allow into my DMZ is ingress. Um, I don't want anything going out. Only things, only people or attackers, requests, connections, whatever traffic coming into my network. So if you have found this video helpful in any way so far, please go ahead and like, subscribe, or comment. I'll really appreciate it. Okay, cool. So with that, with that out the way, let's get into um, ESXi and let's make sure that we get all the networking stuff knocked out. So we're going to create a, a new virtual switch in a port group and then we're going to add them to our PFSense virtual machine and our, um, or my honeypot. So let's go ahead and do that now. So um, under networking tab, hit add standard virtual switch and we're going to name this v switch 2 to follow the naming convention that I've already started. Um, I'm going to choose an empty um, NIC. In my case, it's VM NIC 2. Hit add and go under port group. Hit add port group. And we're going to name this DMZ. And we're going to choose, select the um, virtual switch that we just created. Hit add and cool. So now we can go to our um, PFSense virtual machine and hit edit settings. <clears throat> so we're gonna add a new network adapter and we're gonna select, oh, wait. okay, there it is. So yeah, new network adapter, select DMZ, just had to refresh it for some reason. And we're gonna find my honeypot and we're gonna add, same thing, add a network adapter and it auto selected to the DMZ, so awesome. Hit save. Okay, so now we're going to hop into PFSense, <clears throat> excuse me, and we're going to um, add that new interface that we created in ESXi to um, our available interfaces in PFSense. So as you see, we have this, this new available network port, VMX2. We're going to hit add, and this is after I refresh the page. It might not show initially, so don't, uh, you know, don't be alarmed. We're going to change the name to DMZ, enable the interface, and we're going to choose IP for IPv4 configuration, a static IPv4, and I'm going to change the subnet. Um, for some reason, last time I did this, it didn't work with the slash 32, so um, I just changed it to uh, 29. I think it's like five usable IP addresses, so that's going to be fine for my use case. I might whittle that whittle that down a little bit. So I'm going to start at 40.3, hit save, hit apply. Might take a second. And then we're going to go into, we're going to enable DHCP on this interface. And that's under services, DHCP server, DMZ, hit enable. And again, I'm going to change that range a little bit to just two usable because I only have two IP or two servers that I want to put in my DMZ. I'm going to leave the DNS server blank, and that's going to use the default DNS server that your PFSense um, server is using. And then we're going to hit save. So, uh, should be good. Oh, let's check and make sure that DHCP is working on, um, on our server. So, I'm going to go ahead and reset this virtual machine real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're here in my honeypot. I'm just going to make sure that um, DHCP is working and that, uh, you know, everything's set up correctly. So let's go ahead and log in. Uh, okay, cool. So we're getting the IP address, that 192.168.40.4. And we're gonna go and make sure that our firewall rules are set up correctly. So um, in my case, I have this, this jump box or this machine that I'm gonna use to RDP into the honeypot for management and whatnot. And I have SSH set up on that server on this virtual machine um, as port 429. The Honeypot service is running on port 22. It's just to, um, you know, confuse, or not to confuse attackers, but to basically I want to display the Honeypot as being a legitimate SSH server. So it's on port 22, and I changed actual SSH to port 429. So we're going to create a rule to make sure that I can SSH into port 429 from this uh, from this server here, which is at 
168.30.2. So let's go ahead and management. This is my security lab. Oh, this is my security lab interface or subnet. So we're going to pass IPv4, TCP, source, single host, 30.2, destination, single host, 40.4, honeypot, jump box, honeypot, and we're going to use port 429, which is SSH. And hit apply. All right, let's make sure that it works real quick. All right, cool. So I'm getting a response back. I'm not going to connect. I'm not going to connect right now. So now we need to create another rule on our WAN interface to allow the traffic from our external, from the external uh, internet, into our honeypot. And so we're going to add, add at the bottom, pass um, IPv4 protocol TCP because it is. Uh, that's just what it is. Source, it's going to be uh, any. And destination is going to be single host. And that's going to be 40.4. Port range. Um, so we're broadcasting the Honeypot service over port 22. So uh, then we just change this to SSH, make it easy. Cool. Hit save. And that's what it should look like when you're done. Hit apply. So we're almost done. The last two things we're going to do is port port 22 onto our WAN, and then we're going to enable NAT reflection to test our port forward inside of our internal network. And so we're going to first go to firewall, then NAT, and then port forward. Hit add, interface WAN, IPv4, TCP, destination WAN address. Destination port range, port 22, which is SSH in this instance, single host, and then we're going to choose our honeypot, redirect target port is port 22, which is SSH, and hit save, apply changes. So basically what this is saying is any traffic that's destined for um, our WAN address, our, our external IP address on port 22 is being translated to um, our internal address here at 40.4 on port 22. And lastly, we're going to enable NAT reflection, which is under system, advanced, firewall, and NAT. And NAT reflection, we're going to use NAT plus proxy. And there's a good description over here if you want to read through that. Hit save. All right, so now we're at the point of completion. We should be able to connect to our honeypot on port 22 using our external IP address. And in this, in my case, um, that is my external IP address. I'm going to blur it out, obviously. But um, so the syntax is SSH. You can specify the port, port 22 root at my external IP address and once I hit enter I should be connected to the honeypot and it looks like it's working so I went ahead and connected just before I started this uh, clip because I didn't I forgot the password but the password to my honeypot is tor root spelled backwards and there we are so we're, we're at this point we're done and that's it that's our DMZ inside of pfSense and next video, we'll go over the honeypot setup and how I configured that using Cowrie. It's an open source honeypot found on GitHub. And if you found this video useful in any way, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, put them down below in the comment section. And until next time.